Hello and welcome to Zurich and the Grasshopper Cup 1992. We have a high-class tournament for you with a lot of exciting players. The world number three, Chris Dittmar, title holder. The world champion, Rodney Martin from Australia. Top 15 player, Chris Walker. The English champion, Peter Marshall, a two-handed player. From South Africa, the number two, Gunnar Way. Craig Wapnick, also from South Africa, playing number one in Switzerland. Number two in Switzerland, the veteran Phil Kenyon and the number three in Switzerland and men's national team coach, Andrew Marshall. Andrew, that's uh, quite a list of players there. What sorts the men out from the boys? Well, you've got a lot of guys there who've been playing top squash for a long time. Uh, two fields, really. You've got the top four seeds and then the, the second four. I mean, all the guys play a good game of squash. And what's probably difficult for a club player to, to find out is where the differences are when they are playing. I mean, having played against some of them, I would say there's, there's a few things that you do notice. Their, their ball control around the court is, is much more accurate. They play the ball into the four corners the whole time. And that allows them to stand in the middle of the court and control the tee. They, they hit the ball on the volley a lot more. You never seem to get time to, to move into the back of the court and, and have a little rest. And the other thing is that once you have got them on the rack, uh, they keep running and they keep running and they keep running. <laughs> so Andrew's gone off to get changed for his match. We're going to show you two of the quarterfinals. First one up is Andrew Marshall against Rodney Martin. And we join the match in the second game. Rodney Martin leading and out. one love. Love all. Andrew moving very well and hitting shots like that. That's the kind of shot you'd expect from the world champion. Andrew is showing him how, it's, how it should be done. Uh, in the tin again. Too low. World champion not looking quite so sharp as he was when he won the World Championship a few months ago. And Andrew nicking another one in. Three love. Playing him out of position with the drop shot and hitting him Four to the back love. of the court. Four love. Type drop shot from Rodney, his trademark. And out, love four. And out. Well, that's another one in the tin from four Rodney. Love. Another kill from Andrew. The story of this uh, second game. Five love. Let's go. Five love. Good pick up from Andrew. And love. good length from Rodney Martin. Love five. It's love five. We wouldn't have expected to see Rodney Martin so far down in the second game. That five love. Rodney Martin played out of position again. Six love. And another nick. This is uh, a very strong lead from Andrew now. Seven okay. love. love.
stroke. That's a clear Matthew. stroke. And out. Andrew blocking the shot to the front wall. Love seven. And the world champion turning the tables on One, Andrew now, seven. moving him to the front and then hitting him to the back of the court. Catching him out of position. He's got a lot of work to do to pull back this deficit. Rodney keeping the ball to the back of the court now. He's going to have to keep Andrew to the back of the court and uh, work up a base where he can play his uh, killing shots from. Seven. This is the tactic uh, Rodney's trying to play now, keep Andrew at the back of the court. <laughs> Under pressure at the back there, Andrew. Back in the rally now. being a little bit forced now by Rodney Martin. Four, seven. Forcing that error out of Andrew. <laughs> and perfect drop shot from Five, Martin. Seven. at the back and Rodney Martin finishing the ball off. Six, seven. Well, he's caught up, six, seven. <laughs> yeah, that's a great post. Well, I get seven the feeling all. Andrew might have missed the boat here. Seven love lead is now seven all. Martin looking more at home now, spending more time on the tee. Yes, tired shot from Andrew at the end of that rally. 8-7 game ball. Nine seven game to Martin. And Rodney Martin, Martin went on to win that match nine six, nine seven, nine four. This did to serve, background to receive, best of five games level.
Lawrence, who joined this quarterfinal in the uh, first game. And joining me in the commentary uh, after his tough match there with the world champion is Andrew Marshall. Hello, Chris. So you had a nice shower after that one, Andrew? Yeah, I needed it. <laughs> I think Gunaway might need one after this game. Chris Dittmar in very good form at the moment. Let's see how this one goes. Straight away, the killing boast from Dittmar at the start of the game. I think we're certainly going to see a, a lot of running in this one, Chris. Uh, Gunner's renowned for his ability to, to cover all corners of the court, and I'm sure Dittmar's going to show them to him. Yes. Of course, it's a, it's a trademark of Dittmar's play that he dominates the tee and uh, sends his opponent all over the shop. As we see there. Well, that's an unfortunate uh, fall for Too Gunner long. there, but uh, leaving himself totally in the way of Dittmar's shot. So the referee quite rightly awarding the, uh, the stroke to, to Dittmar. Yes, I wouldn't want to get in the way of one of Dittmar's shots in that position. Now. Exactly Love the same situation do. again. Dittmar getting in the way of his own shot and uh, preventing Gunner from hitting the ball to the front wall. So once again, a, uh, a stroke decision. Probably, Chris, one of the most difficult things for our viewers to uh, to understand the, the let and stroke situation. Yes, we've uh, been lucky to have two very clear examples of the stroke there. I'm sure we're going to get a few tighter ones later on. I mean, basically, uh, the main thing to look for is, is it a, a question of not being able to hit the ball or, or moving to the ball? Uh, if the referee sees that it's a, a clear hitting problem, then uh, he's going to award the stroke, no, I think. For example, here, we are gone away looking for a let. What yeah, do you think? Well, um, it's always difficult. I mean, I think there, he, certainly, maybe it was Dittmar was in the way of, of his shot. Like I said, if uh, if the referee is not sure, then he will obviously uh, not award the stroke and maybe even, like in that situation, give the no let. If he uh, actually thinks it's just a, a moving problem, uh, the player's prevented from getting to the ball, then uh, it will always be a, a let ball. A loose shot from Gunaway onto the tee and Dittmar gives him one back, tit for tat. And a loose one in the tin from Gunnar. Board love. That's a quick lead of four love for Chris Dittmar, that'll be a start of this match. I think beginning of every match uh, players take a bit of time to settle down. Quite often one starts quicker than the other. And, uh, I mean Gunnar's not playing against players of Dittmar's calibre all the time and uh, he'll certainly need a bit of time to get used to the pace of the game. Yes, and I suppose it's, he's not used to playing quite as tight as Dittmar keeps it. You can see he's able to keep the ball tight in the back. He's just not renowned for playing the ball so tight to the front of the court. Of course, any, any loose shots at any part of the court are going to get gobbled up by Chris Dittmar. He's not number three in the world for nothing. Not up. Just catching the top of the tin there. Love five. Ball was, was down. You see there, the ball in the middle of the court from Dittmar and uh, Gunnar found the, the winning reverse angle. I mean at every, every level, if you can keep the ball away from the middle of the court and you get 
the opponent's loose shot back in the middle, you can always dominate the game. And I mean, this is where what Gunn has really got to concentrate on against Dittmar. He's got to keep him away as much as he can from the tee and not be afraid to, to go for his winners when he gets a loose ball. Quite often you, you get afraid of, of attacking a player with, a, with a, a reputation such as Dittmar. Hand out. It's another one in the Five tin one. from, from Gunnar. 5-1 Dittmar. There's quite a few loose balls ending up in the middle of the court here, Andrew. Not very tight at the moment. It's <coughs> sort of a balance between uh, good and bad at the moment. A sign that both players are trying to settle into this, into this first game. Now this is where you see Dittmar really controlling the tee. You also get the sort of from this front camera angle, you also get the idea of, of the speed of the players moving into the front of the court. That was a tight boast. A long rally as well. The longest rally of the match. So and far. One, five. Gunner getting on the score sheet. One, five. I certainly think Gunner's got into the pace of the game now. And uh, attacking the ball on the volley a little bit. Seems to be enjoying himself. Uh, the tricky one from Didmar. And too tricky. <laughs> Hand out. Time, please. Thanks, Thanks yeah, a few late arrivals. And, uh, five, one. Mm. Dittmar stepping up the pace a little bit in this rally. Well, again, it's always depends on the kind of ball you're getting from your opponent. If he's hitting the ball in the middle, you're able to step the pace up. And this is uh, the difference between the players right at the top and those trying to get to the top. You've just got to, when you're under pressure, keep that ball away from the middle of the court. Now Gunner's doing it and he's back in the middle himself. Dittmar having to stretch. A lot of and again. This rally. And both players lobbing the ball from the front of the court to gain time. And Dittmar oh, had plenty of time to choose a winning shot there. Great rally. Both players moving around the court a lot. Dittmar finishing it off. Six, one, left box. I mean, although Gunner's not winning a lot of points, he certainly is... Uh, Playing to a to a very good standard here. He bounds around the court, doesn't he? Yes. Leaps and bounds. Full of energy. And he actually, uh, one thing he never seems to be lacking is uh, his energy. Something I could have actually done with uh, against Rodney. Against yes, Rodney at the end. Oh. oh. 
My goodness me. You can often see that one played. And probably quite a lot of people watching this actually miss what Dittmar does. Uh, Seven, one. Or did there. Played a very sharp angle into the nick on the boast there. This is Dittmar's uh, great strength, being able to uh, flick with the wrist and change the uh, shot at the last moment. Very hard for the opponent to, to pick up what's going on. You should actually see the size of his forearm. It's, uh, oh, Dittmar is quite a size himself. He's one of the biggest squash players at almost 80 kilos, I think. Oh, shot. Oh, and killed dead. Gunaway can do it too. And out, 1-7. Got the serve back, he's still only got one point. Well, there's the second one, Dittmar. Two, the seven. Serve into the tin, you don't often see that. Uh, he's what over a stretch. Again. He's over again, but up again this time. Didn't give the stroke away. Yes, no, that's I'm not how happy with it, huh? That's <laughs> how he should have done it the first time. I didn't want to play on. And out, 7 2. Stretch to the front. Out of position. Kick to the back corner there. We can see that from the front camera and very clearly. And it's game ball. Dittmar, of course, himself stretches very well, but he always seems to stay perfectly in balance. Gunner flying from one corner to the other at times here. again. Game Too late for that one. Nine, so the first game goes to Dittmar 9-2 and that was how the, the rest of the match went on with Dittmar moving the ball around the court and uh, Gunner running for everything but uh, not able to get the points needed. And really is unbelievable what he ran for. Dittmar just keeping the ball tight most of the time. And you get a great idea of this back camera of the, the speed of the game and tightness of the balls along the wall. A little bit of an injustice there, <laughs> Dittmar putting that one in the tin after moving Gunner all over the court. Here we see it in slow motion. The accuracy of Dittmar and the mobility of Gunnerway. There he is, look at that. Up against the glass wall, bounces back into the rally. And then up again for the next shot. Really full of energy. In the quarterfinals, uh, Chris Dittmar beat Gunaway 3-love, Craig Wapnick lost 3-1 to Chris Walker, Phil Kenyon lost 3-love to Peter Marshall, and predictably enough, uh, Andrew Marshall lost 3-love to the world champion, but he gave him a very good game. Andrew, what was it like uh, playing Rodney Martin? Well, I mean, the, f the first phase of the Marshall plan failed. Uh, we got Peter Marshall, has got him in the next round. Uh, I would, Peter and I talked about this match before, and we thought that one of us was going to get him. I think he's got a good chance actually because playing Rodney, Rodney's not on top form at the moment. He had an injury after the World Championship which kept him out of training, he hurt his foot and I mean I, even I noticed that he's, he's not hitting the ball as well as he normally does. He relies on that in his game, he likes to, to place the ball into the nick at the front of the court and that wasn't working, he made a lot of mistakes. And fitness wise I don't think he's up to what he was when he won the World Championships. So I think uh, part two of the Marshall plan might stand a good chance. Yes, and in the other semi-final we've got uh, Chris Dittmar against Chris Walker. How does that look? Well, Dittmar, as, as, as we've always known, is 
always precise, always controlling the tee. I think Chris Walker, he hasn't been as uh, in the world's top 15 as long as Dittmar has and hasn't got the experience yet to be able to put Chris Dittmar under the kind of pressure that he needs to. And I think it will be a, a fairly clear three love for, for Dittmar. So let's see how these predictions will turn out in the semi-finals. So love all, first game, Peter Marshall, Rodney Martin. Well, this is the one we've all been waiting for. I'm sure Peter's quite pleased that he's one love. got another crack at one of the top five players in the world. Yeah, I think it's the third time he's played Rodney Martin. Up until now, he's lost both previous games. Well, Peter's slowly been sort of ticking the top players off in his books over the last year. He's been moving over, moving up very steadily in the world rankings, up to 14 now, and still climbing. I remember about. Uh, I think it was uh, two years ago in Basel at the Jeffreys Open. Uh, he was ranked at about 90-something uh, uh, and uh, won that tournament quite comfortably. Well, it's come a long way from there. Well, she's no, uh, no stranger to Switzerland, uh, Peter Marshall, Chris. He's, uh, he was here as a junior as well, about the age of 11, playing in the, the Swiss Junior Open. Yes. Well, he's doing all right here at the start of this game. He's certainly having a go at Rodney Martin. Hits the ball so hard with those two hands to the back of the court, Peter Marshall. Well, for people who've, who've never Thank actually you. seen him or, or someone who does play with two hands, and there's not many of those around, it's it's... It's quite a strange sensation at the start. You, you wonder how, how he does it. Lost the jewel of the drop shots there. Yes. So one, two. He, he does play some shots with, the, with one hand when he hasn't got time to get both hands on the racket there or has to stretch. Yes, that's uh, something uh, he's had to learn as he's gone up in the in the world rankings because obviously the game gets so much faster the the and higher you get, one. and there's not always time for him to to prepare the racket with those two hands. But when he does have time, uh, he can uh, use the two hands for power or touch with with great effect. The ball. Just the touching uh, Rodney on the backswing there, so and it's uh, a let ball on the backswing. Yes, it's yes. often difficult for the spectators to see. Huh? Well, there was Rodney was uh, not stopping him from playing a, a winning shot. It was just uh, a slight touch on the backswing, so played the let. There he was hit with the ball, Peter Marshall from Rodney. Let ball, and he's Two given one. a let because the ball was going to hit the side wall. That's right. There, they're going for each other, huh? <laughs> Peter hitting with the racket, Rodney getting him back with the ball. Obviously uh, not something one wants to do, but it uh, does happen occasionally. Yeah, I don't think any of it intentional, of course. No. Uh, Peter Marshall, an extremely fair player, and uh, Rodney Martin also a great example for the game. Le ball. Again, the, a movement problem there in the back of the court. Peter not being able to get round Rodney to the, to the length. Read the line of shot on that one. Three one. I think the ball hit the floor first. So Peter moving ahead here in the start of this game. Mm, but I know. Rodney getting the open one, court and three. putting the ball away as is his, as is his trademark. 
One thing you'll also see from this, this front camera is uh, the preparation of Rodney Martin's racket. The way the racket face always opens up before each shot. Of course this allows him to, to cut the ball a lot more than, uh, than most players. And also, Chris, to, to change the angle of the shot at the last second. And that's why when you're playing him, you, you never know where you've got to go next. Another cut shot to the front of the court, moving Peter Marshall up. So what's the referee going to give here? The ball. Yes, I think uh, right decision there again. Just a, a movement right. problem. One three. So Rodney settled down a little bit now. Started to play a few rallies, putting some balls nicely straight down the wall. He loves to play that one, Rodney, the straight drop. And a lot of movement in this rally from both players again. Rodney having to colour the full length of the court and just getting the ball back off the back wall. Longest rally so far. That is. Oh. This isn't the sort of shot that Rodney plays when he's in form, is it? Yes, but I mean, although he put that one in the tin, he actually moved the head quite nicely. Uh, the rest of the game up to 8-5, and we join it there. Stroke to Peter, and add. And 5-8. Peter getting back in with a, a stroke decision, couldn't hit that ball towards the front wall, and uh, saved the game ball to take the score to 5-8. And it was a mistake such as that that took Peter back to, to eight all. And we join it here with Rodney serving at eight all. Peter's really got himself back into this game. Basically by just running, Chris, huh? Yes, yeah, certainly. But I, I think Rodney, he really should have polished it off there. He had a good lead, but Peter's fought his way back in. I think Rodney's going to kick himself if he doesn't take this set. Well, it's mistakes. At critical times. And Peter Marshall just doesn't give up on the ball, does he? he? He runs to everything. I think if you ever wanted to sort of in still oh. some kind of spirit in a junior, it's it's Peter's spirit fight. But I mean, you can't fight and get that kind of ball back. And that's My Rodney name. Martin at game his best. Ball. So it's a second game ball for Rodney Martin. A really important point for both players. Oh, tight boast. Good pick up from Peter Marshall. A good reply. Dan. And mm. another tin there. I mean, that really is Rodney's Hello. problem at the moment. Eight, nine. Balls in the tin. I mean, they're not, <laughs> they're not far down, but uh, they've only got to touch the red. I'm sure Jeff Hunt would be saying to him, hit the ball higher, Rodney. And Rodney uh, credits... Uh, a lot of his uh, success to the relationship he's had with Jeff Hunt over the last few years at the Institute of Sport in Australia. Jeff Hunt, of course, the former world champion. Tight shots there. Yes, oh, what do you think of that one, Andrew? Worth a let? That's, uh, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the referee there, I think. Rodney not happy. Well, he knew he'd hit a, a good shot. And the referee is sure that he would have got it, so <laughs> just informing the referee that Peter's got two hands on the racket and can't reach as far. 
He's always got a one-liner, Rodney. I think he's a little bit unlucky on that one. It was an important time. The referee has to call it as he sees it. And the other thing is, you, you can't argue too much once he's made his mind up. You're not going to change it. Got to get on with the next point. Which is exactly what Rodney Martin's doing now. Just touches at the front of the court. Peter not able to capitalise on the loose shot in the middle there. But he's not making mistakes. Le ball. I mean, if you look yes. back on that rally, you'd seen that Rodney was the person running around in the corners. Yes. I mean, Peter's playing playing the right game here. And there was no need for Rodney to look Eight, a little bit upset with that decision because it was a clear let ball. Maybe he's still disturbed at the decision before. Oh, that one's in the tin. And risky. I mean, look at his position there, right from Nine the back all, of the court, ball. trying to put the ball across into the nick. So now he faces saving a game ball. Putting the pressure on. Great cross court. Hello. I mean, that's what he's got to do now. He's, he's got to step the pressure up. He's got to, Nine all game ball. got to start hitting the ball more into those back corners. To build this position up, hasn't he, to play his yeah, winning exactly. shot? I think all of those, all of us who play, uh, make the same mistake, Chris. Tight <laughs> <laughs> drop shot from Peter Marshall. Just the touch of the two hands there. And that. Nine-all game ball. So it's a second game ball now for Peter Marshall. Can he convert? Well, he want to. Oh, he doesn't have to. Yeah, Not with shots like that. No, Rodney's put the ball into the tin again. And uh, that's how the, the game went on. And we join it here in the third game. It's uh, one-all. And Rodney's now got to look to get himself back into the game. He's certainly making Peter work. But Peter's getting everything back. Some nice touch there from Rodney Martin. They were just playing one too many short. Hello. Yeah, do you even hit the floor first on that one, Andrew? Yes. One all. And uh, game move on. Rodney's still making mistakes. Peter picking up balls like that one. And putting it in the nick. <laughs> and nice. Really on a high. 8-5 match ball. Well, who would have expected that at the beginning of this match? A match ball against the world champion. And if he takes this, it will be a 3-love. Got his work cut out to stay in this match now. Well, he can't think about that. He's just got to play it safe. Oh, in the tin. A reversal of roles. And add five eight. So Rodney consoling Peter there after he didn't convert his match ball. Yeah, a sporting gesture. When you consider the situation, I think if I was him, I'd be a bit more worried about winning this game. Oh, that's got to be a stroke. Stroke to Peter. Yes. Eight-five match ball. So, Peter, can you take your chance? Well, I think he wants it certainly more than Rodney does. Oh, 
it is. Well, the story of the match, Chris. I guess it is. In Too the many mistakes, yes. And that's a great win for Peter Marshall there. Three love against the world champion. So, Andrew, see if we can keep the Chris's apart here in this uh, second semi-final. It's Dietmar, Chris Walker. And uh, Chris Haddon in the commentary box. Yeah, well, not much confusion there. Certainly not if you got me on the court. Actually, uh, quite an unusual phenomena here. We've got two left-handers. Handout, pull up. So uh, they're playing the forehand rally down the, the left-hand wall and the backhand down the right-hand wall. It's quite interesting, the contrast, when you get uh, a left-hander and a right-hander playing together. Whoops, Chris Ooh, Dittmar very sporting, holding back the shot there. Yes, I Didn't think Chris was happy about that. Yes. Uh, with the left-hander against the right-hander, you tend to find that uh, right-handers find it very difficult to, to get out of the habit of playing the ball down the left-hand wall, which would normally be onto a, a fellow right-hander's backhand. And they feed the left-hander a lot to his, his strength on the forehand. Obviously with two left-handers here this, this effect is uh, nullified. Well this is a familiar pattern. Dittmar working well from the tee. Oh, a nice tight straight drop. Chris Walker. And out love four. As I was saying, Dittmar, a familiar pattern there, dominating the tee and sending his opponent around the corners, as he loves to do. I think it's uh, Chris Walker's obviously a different class of player to, to gun away. He's, uh, he's beaten people like Rodney Martin and other top world players. And uh, he's also got a, a very attacking game. Looks very athletic there. Andrew, I remember seeing him a couple of years ago in the Grasshopper Club over for some training. And he looks like he's put on a few leg muscles there. Yes, uh, he's been training full time now for about three years. And obviously all that work over those years is, is paying off now. you have mentioned, Andrews, I believe you've uh, had a hand in coaching uh, Chris Walker. No, well, he was uh, a lot smaller in those days. As a junior? Yes, at the age of uh, 10 or so, we, we used to spend a bit of time on court together. Right. Oh, that's a great yeah. shot. Right. That's what he can do. I mean, if, if Dittmar does play the ball loose, uh, One four. Walker will be able to, to put it away. as a junior he always had a lot of disadvantages he was one of the tiniest juniors on the circuit but uh, and out for one. obviously one grows up I think also you've got two very classic styles here you, uh, once again see this open face preparation very early behind each shot. Yes, and that shot there typical Five of one. the match. Dittmar being able to outmaneuver Chris Walker, pushing him into the back corners, front corners, and Chris Walker not being able to get the ball back onto the front wall there. Six one. The match carrying on in this fashion. Nine one, nine three, and now in the third game, Dittmar keeping the pressure on Chris Walker. He certainly hasn't given up. Let's put everything into this game, Chris Walker. 
seems to have been on the rack most of the time. He's got to be asking himself, what haven't I done, I think? I wouldn't be the first to ask that question against Chris Dittmar. Dittmar sitting on the tee all the time now. And now you see this also the, the tired recovery from, from Walker. Look at that, just got the strength to put the ball back onto the front wall. And again? No. Ah, it's in the tin. <coughs> A three game and match ball. There's a little discussion going on there. I think he could use the rest. I think so. Dittmar wanting to get on with it. Dittmar well, thinking he was a little bit lucky to get a let out of that, Chris Walker. Well, I mean, the question the referee had to ask himself there was really Dittmar standing in the way of a, of a good shot to the back of the court, or had Chris Walker not made enough effort and uh, he decided that Dittmar was standing in the way. And out, 3-8. Well, he's still in there. That's a tough, tough player. He didn't like putting that one in the tin. He wants to finish this off. And there oh, you oh. go. And out, A3, game and match ball. This Walker's still got some speed there. Let ball. I think Walker thinking there that that was the stroke. Still fighting. It's very athletic, Chris Walker. Even when he's tired, he's still got spring in his legs. Out of court, hand out, 3-8. And still in the game. I mean, that's the one thing I think that's the, the telling factor at, at all levels is you can't give up. Out of court, eight, match ball, three. Just got to keep on fighting, but bit more with match ball again. Neither playing short, waiting for the the opening, the loose shot in the middle. You can't risk at this stage of a game. That's what happened to Rodney Martin, huh? Exactly. It's a long rally. Let ball. And once again punctuated with a, a clear movement problem Eight into the front three. of the court. Left. Left. Chris Walker happy for a little walk around the court here. Get his breath back. Oh, looking for something, I think. Inspiration. Out of court, game and, and match. That's it. <laughs> so predictably, Chris Dittmar beating Chris Walker with three love, but an upset with Peter Marshall beating the world champion three love. Andrew? Well, I mean, uh, I think Rodney's not on form at the moment. That showed it. Uh, Peter Marshall was running around all over the place, getting the ball back. Rodney just didn't have the patience to stay in the game. He made the mistakes, and that's what uh, gave Peter the match. I think uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different story, though, against uh, Chris Dittmar.
Yes, well, after the semi-finals, I talked to the two finalists. So, Peter Marshall, one of tonight's uh, finalists in the final of the Grasshopper Cup 92, 20 years of age, and you're British champion and British number one. Yeah, um, I won the British Closed uh, in January uh, this year. Uh, I've been British number one before, but um, to win the, the British Closed is a, a really good title to win. You had a great game last night. You beat Rodney Martin, the world champion, in three straight sets. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, well, the first game was uh, very close. Uh, I think I was down about 8-4, 8-5, and uh, I managed to win. And uh, probably whoever won the first was going was to win the match. And uh, you know, I don't think probably Rodney's quite back to his full finish yet after his injury. But uh, yeah, I was pleased to win. So what would you say are the advantages of using two hands for you? What would you say? Um, probably one of the main things is deception. Um, it's something different. So uh, you know, it's, it's, I think some players find when they first play me, I'm quite difficult to read. Uh, so that's been the main advantage. And the disadvantage is playing with two hands? Do you have to run more? Uh, probably, and you know, for, for stretching, and it's a bit harder. But I'm trying to play more one-handed shots when I'm under pressure, so I'm trying to get around that. Yeah. And tonight you face Chris Dittmar, one of the, the game's dominant players over the last ten years. He's world number three. He won the uh, Grasshopper Cup last year, beating Yahingir. What do you think tonight? Well, I've played Chris a few times, and uh, I've never really come that close to beating him. So tonight, I'm just going to give him a best shot and uh, see, see what happens. Yeah, you hadn't beat Rodney before last night either. No, that's true. Yeah, I'd lost to Rodney twice before. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to try as hard as I can and not give anything away and, you know, make it really hard for him. You're back again at the Grasshoppers Cup. Last year, you won it. Yeah. You beat Yahangir Khan in the final shortly before Yahangir won the British Open for a record 10th time. Yeah. That must have been quite a win for you last year. Yeah, I guess it was. Uh, at the time, I felt pretty good about it, and it uh, gave me a lot of confidence. But uh, uh, Jahangir, as you said, bounced back and went on to win the British Open and, in fact, won a lot of tournaments at that time. So maybe I gave him the spark that he needed um, to, uh, yeah, to go on and win those events. I'm not too sure. Yeah, so you're back again this year, and uh, uh, your opponent uh, tonight is going to be Peter Marshall, yep. who beat, actually, Rodney Martin, the world champion, last night. How did it look... Uh, playing against a two-handed player tonight in the final, young Peter Marshall. Yeah, well, Peter's obviously a very good player, and uh, I think at the moment his ranking probably doesn't... Ju well, I don't think it's a true indication of how good he is because uh, he has beaten uh, some of the world's top 10 players. Uh, he's ranked in the world's top 16 at the moment, I think, but as I've said, he's, he's beaten some of the, the world's best players and has proved that he, he is of that standard. So I realise I'm in for a pretty tough final, and... Uh, I have to go into the match thinking of that. I have to think that Peter's going to put me under a lot of pressure. He's a very good retriever. He takes the ball very early. And uh, I'll be aware of all those sorts of things. And uh, as I've already said, I think it'll be a fairly hard match. Any special tactics that you're going to use because he's a two-handed player? Yeah, I've got you special do? tactics. And yeah. you'll let us know about that after the match, probably. <laughs> probably not even then. <laughs> OK, so you know how you want to play him, but you don't want to talk about that. Sure. That's understandable. That's clear. Um, what about the rest of your career, Chris? You've been around a long time now. You're 28 years old. You've been in the top 10 for about 10 years. Yeah. That's an amazing feat. That means from the time of about 18, you've been uh, up at the top there. Now, how do you see the rest of your future? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's probably one of those things that you really have to just take a week at a time or maybe a month at a time. I don't try to look too far ahead for no other reason other than I think it's just important to focus on the next match. Um, as you've mentioned, I have to play Peter Marshall in the final of the Grasshopper Cup tonight and that's really what I think about today, obviously. I think about how I'll beat Peter and what I think my strengths and weaknesses are and what I'll, you know, how I'll go about that task. Uh, I then play the German Open uh, starting tomorrow in Cologne. I then have to start thinking about that and I really do just take it that way. I think too often uh, we all make the mistake of thinking ahead and thinking what I think I can do and how good I can be and all of that type of thing. And I think it's a mistake, uh, certainly in a sporting career anyway. You really must take each hurdle as it comes. Well, Chris Dittmar, good luck tonight, and uh, thank you very much for the interview, and we wish you a lot of luck for the German thank Open you. next week and the British Open. Thanks coming. very so, much. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. So Chris Dittmar there, as formidable in the interview as he is on court. Uh, Andrew, is squash always such a serious business? Well, I think when you're a professional, yes, obviously it is a serious thing, but it is possible to have uh, the top guys in the world on court and have a good time. Yes, well, we had an example of that, as you're going to see right now.
So we're looking forward to the final. Chris Dittmar, the world number three, as we've seen in great form, against Peter Marshall, who's upset the world champion. Andrew, do you think there's going to be another upset here? Well, uh, personally, no. I think Dittmar's too strong and too experienced for Peter He's Marshall. playing well, isn't he? Yes. yes, Peter Marshall hasn't been for the number of years that Dittmar has on the, the top of the world rankings. And from style-wise, I think Dittmar's going to have too much ball control for him. I mean, Peter's not going to give him the game, he's not going to give up, he's going to run like he did against Rodney, but I don't think Dittmar will allow him the mistakes that Rodney did. Yes, well, let's see if Chris Dittmar can hold the title of the Grasshopper Cup. Grasshopper Cup final, 1992. Peter Marshall to serve, Chris Dittmar to receive, best of five games, love all. So the unexpected final there, Chris. Liberal. Yes, well... Chris Dittmar, I think most people were expecting, but not Peter Marshall. But thoroughly deserved win against, uh, against the world champion. Let's see how this match uh, shapes up. Peter Marshall already starting off at a cracking pace at how he's hitting the ball. And at level. Yes, you're right. He's laying into that, isn't he? I don't think really that's going to be the kind of thing to, to upset Dittmar. It's going to be the basic rule of moving the ball away from the middle. So I think it's going to give Peter the best chance. Dittmar can hit the ball hard too. Yes. I mean, this is maybe... Uh, one of the things for a club player to, to see that when they want to hit the ball hard, they have to get that racket back early behind the ball. All top players getting the racket behind the ball as early as possible. I think the, the biggest advantage uh, for club players in recent years is the development of new materials for the racket because in the old days you really had to swing those wooden clubs but nowadays uh, quite often just a short swing and a flick of the wrist will, will get the ball to the back. It's also speeded the, uh, the professional game up uh, a lot. So Peter moving through there, trying to play the ball, but I think to his own disadvantage. It's stuck on the wall when he tried to play that one. Didn't look for the net there. Oh, Dittmar laying into that one. Very low. My goodness. Players not distracted by the spectators moving behind the back of the court. Didn't mind trouble with that one. Stroke to, <coughs> stroke to Peter and at love three. Clear stroke. Stop, stop, please. Can you stop the people coming in? 
And the referee rightly breaking play there to make sure that the spectators don't move behind the court. So with um, the new four wall glass courts that the players play on a lot of the time, they've actually got much more used to, to people moving around the court. No let and add but, uh, three love. Obviously, don't want people moving around the whole time. Indication of the pace of the game here, Peter Marshall being forced to play the ball with one hand a few times there. The lovely drop shot. Finish the rally. Yeah, when he's got time Love three. and space, he, he's got such deft touch with that uh, two-handed drop shot. So, I haven't picked up Dittmar's special tactics that he was talking about yet. Seems to be developing to quite a normal, normal game. And I have three love. We've seen that Nick shot before. <laughs> I think both of them have decided that they're going to to play at a very high pace. a one-handed <laughs> shot that uh, Peter wasn't uh, ready for at all. Could you attribute that to his uh, two-handed play, the fact that he missed it? Andrew? I think it's certainly difficult for him when he's rushed to take one hand off the racket and especially on the forehand side to, to open the Five racket love. face to get the ball back on the front wall. Again there, putting the boast into the tin. Uh, not able to lift the ball, the racket face was was closed and obviously the ball could not make it up onto the front wall. I certainly think if I was playing him I'd be looking to put him un under pressure on his forehand. I mean if he's got time there obviously he's going to do anything with the ball but uh, Dittmar can get the cross courts across quick enough and fast enough I think that's going to put uh, Peter in a lot of trouble. He certainly won't be able to pressurise Dittmar when uh, when he does that. accurately placed into the back corners here. And there oh. it goes. Can't get more accurate than that one. No, that's Three uh, in a row. A great shot. Six love. Probably the least appreciated shot in squash the length. But well, Dittmar played a series of those to get the point out of Peter Marshall. And I've got uh, Dittmar saying in an interview once that uh, everybody thinks he's a, a great shot player but in fact uh, he thinks he's his games based on hitting the ball to length. And Again, Peter Marshall didn't seem to be ready with his racket there to play that one. No, I think he'd have done better to have uh, put the ball up as a lob and got some time to get back into that rally. Mind you, it's easy for us to uh, sitting up here. Know, tell them what to do. Huh? I think we've got a little bit used to this fast pace on the court. They're still hitting the ball very, very fast, moving around the court. Something that doesn't always come over on the television. I think to watch for is to, to see 
how far the players have to move away from the tee. That really is quick. Wow, Peter Marshall seemed to pick the ball straight out of the nick there. My goodness. They make it look so easy, don't they? Certainly do. They get a little bit more impression of the movement that's involved. It was a long, hard and fast <coughs> rally, Andrew. Yes, I am saw Dittmar stop <coughs> and uh, take a breath there. He's a big man to be moving around at this kind of pace, isn't he? But he's been at the world, uh, top of the world for, for 10 years now. He has the strength to carry it. That's in fact the one thing he's improved the most over the last two years in, in his quest to, to beat the Khans. And here at Love 7, looking uh, in a commanding position in the first game. I don't think I've seen a mistake yet, Chris, from him. Well, we have now. Yeah, I walked into that one, didn't I, huh? So, Peter's on the score sheet, 1-7. I think we could actually say that was forced, Chris. <laughs> Exterior influences. Dietmar laying into the ball again here. It's not letting up on the pace at all. Peter going full with him all the way. I just get the feeling that uh, Dittmar's spending more time on the tee than, than Peter. Peter's racket work. Not moving the ball as far away from the tee. Two seven. Dittmar getting in the way of his own shot there, giving the ball up. He knew it was a... Uh, a stroke for Peter. Tommy, it might be nice to see a few club players do. Yes, yes. Certainly would, would help to bring a bit of fairness into the game. No let, and that. Peter Seven looking two. for a let there, I don't know. He didn't show any signs of being disappointed about not getting it. I think the referee rightly deciding that there wasn't enough effort. And that was into the Eight nick at the, the back. Ball. Bringing eight to the first game ball for Chris Dittmar. Tight lengths into the back court again. It's quite a contrast, isn't it? These beautiful strokes from Dittmar and the. Uh, Peter Marshall, it almost looks uh, laboured. He seems to have to work so much to hit the ball and move to get into position to hit the ball. I think you're right, Chris, but as he said in his interview, he's, he's done it since he was eight years old and uh, he's developed that style. He's up there with the, with the world leaders with his two-handed style. Very long rally, that game ball. Dittmar just seems to be biding his time. Moving Peter away from the tee all the time. Oh, beautiful boast. Finish off this game. So here's a chance to look at uh, that long rally in the first set again from this front camera angle. You can see the accuracy of the balls hit into the back corner. See Dietmar mostly on the tee, dominating the play from the tee. Peter Marshall hardly able to get him away from the tee. 
And then when he's got him away, Dittmar's there as quick as he can to gain this dominant position. Again, just that early preparation on the ball. You see it so well from here. Into the corner there. When he's forced away from the tee, Dittmar's back there with a stretch. So hard for Peter to get Dittmar away from the tee. But I think the boast might be the key, huh? Well, I don't know if the audience has been counting the shots. The long, very long rally. Look at this My kind of goodness, pace. there we go, 63, Chris. Look at that pace. Chris leads one game to love, second game, love all. So, into the second game. What can Peter do to change the course of this match? I think he's obviously been uh, thinking in the break about what he's going to do. Le ball. Le ball. And like I said, I think he's he's got to be a little bit more positive to move Dittmar off the tee into the front rather than just relying on balls to the back all the time. Le ball. Le ball. Dittmar not ready to play a, a winning shot, so just getting the, the let ball from the referee. down the side wall showing the tightness of the ball into the back corner and the front on some of these look at that <laughs> oh, I had to get right into the camera to get that one out <laughs> and then the lob to get time to get back to the middle That's one reason why you, you almost can't get Dittmar away from the tee when he is away. He, he does use the lob well to, to get him back there. Exactly. He wins time when he can. I think it's probably the most forgotten fact in squash that there's actually a, a wall that's uh, more than two metres high. Both players pulling the ball out of the nick here at the moment. That's up. unbelievable. One love. And then it's just back into the next rally, huh? As if nothing ever happened. <laughs> Lip ball. One love. to move a little bit quicker there. A couple of volleys from Peter Marshall. Can't imagine it's a shot that Peter finds easy to play with, <laughs> with two hands. So you've got to take the ball early on the volley. I think it's when he he'll play when he's got enough time, but when the ball comes across very quickly, I think a reaction volley's a little bit difficult. Well, we've got Peter here working Chris Dittmar. Well, we've seen he's starting to use the boast now. I think he must have been, uh, must have been listening to you, Andrew. Well, I think uh, that's probably something that he can work out for himself. <laughs> Uh, 
so tight into those back corners. And again, in it, a really long rally. I don't think we're seeing anything under 50 shots at the moment. Looking for a little there. Dittmar just in, in the way of the backswing. One love. All and that work and uh, <laughs> yes. just a lead at the end of it. Tight both from Peter Marshall. Let ball. And One love. Again, just the movement into the front court blocked by Dittmar. Was there a lot of effort? I was happy to take a letter out of that one, but I must say up until now, the refereeing has been absolutely correct. And that, love one. mistake from from one now that time he was a, a little late to prepare almost on court with the players there and of and at one all What about that one? Straight through the middle. What do you think, Andrew? I uh, caught Peter totally by surprise. Oh, wow. a little pirouette uh, in the middle there. Bit interesting if he called a let. <laughs> Probably the kind of situation the referee that you, you hope they don't. Yes. I must say, with, with Peter Marshall there, he, he doesn't seem to call very many lets. He seems to try and go through every time and play the ball where, where possible, where, where players of, uh, of Dietmar's experience uh, would, would call the let. I must say, it, it makes the, the, a very, uh, for a very sporting game, but I wonder sometimes if that's not a little bit of uh, uh, naivety from Peter Marshall. Well, the Australians... Uh Certainly renowned for playing much more on the referee, but I mean, if it's to your disadvantage, I think you, you should stop and maybe that's something Peter's going to learn as uh, he spends more years uh, on the circuit. But referees today are certainly very much in favour of uh, keeping the flow in the game. Oh, oh. what a nice kick that can get now. Look at the way he held it. And that was the fact where he, he really kept the shot back till very late and then just a little flick of the wrist sent the ball across court. Oh, length. And again, we've got a great view of that one. That oh, flick one. of the wrist again. Five one. Peter not happy, huh? Looked a bit rattled on that one, didn't it? Knew it was... Uh, a cheap shot. Of course, the mark of, of players at this standard, they, they, they soon forget. 
mistakes or, or, or bad shots or bad calls and they get into the business again and just play the next ball as Dittmar says. Certainly. Pit looking for a net there. Net ball. 5-1. See how he sort of flings himself at full stretch onto those balls. And once again, again that cross. I mean, Dittmar just holds the shot Six so one. late. I mean, you have you have to cover everything. And uh, once he knows where you are, he just flicks the ball across in the opposite direction. Peter rightly says, "Come on, he's." Lost a little bit of his concentration here. He's having to struggle to stay in the game at the moment, Peter. Succeeded in moving Dittmar around the court a bit more, but he's still only got one point out of this game for all his efforts. Well, maybe it will tell later. Dittmar having to use the back wall to get the ball back there. Again. Always using the height when he's away from the tee, isn't he? Yes. It's time to get back there. Getting the low. And there I thought Peter could have volleyed. If he could just do that a little bit more often as well. He can keep... He's, he's slowed Chris Dittmar up at the moment. Surely it would be... No, no. Stroke to Chris. Well, Peter doesn't feel he was in the way of the shot there. Andrew? From the left. Very tight. I think the referee thinking that... Uh, from the left side. Peter was preventing Chris eight from one, playing a winning ball. shot to the front wall, but did he see it early enough? That would have been the question in, in my mind. But... Made his decision. Out. Mm. And out. Dittmar won't like that. One he doesn't like hitting anything out of court, and uh, he's usually so safe on the lob there. It's the perfectionist in him. Tight boast. Dittmar having to move to recover the ball. Let's move a, a little bit quicker. Thank you. Dick Marr showing there that he didn't, didn't get the ball up on the first attempt there. Again, Two fairness. Eight. Well, this is a lesson for any player, I would say, Andrew. That's uh, Peter Marshall, he's down 2-8 there, and he's putting everything in to get back in here. He's not saying, well, my opponent's got 8 and he's almost got the set, I might as well give it up. He's, he's really getting into Chris Dittmar at the moment, getting himself back into the game. That's probably one thing if you ask the players, uh, do you actually know the score while you're, you're hitting the ball? They would say uh, no. Just I'm playing the next ball. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to... Get on with winning the next point. Peter Marshall seems to be more in control at this stage. Right, there it was. Dittmar right in the corner.
So again, we're seeing more and more of that boast from Peter Marshall. And we're seeing more and more lobs from Chris Titmar. He seems to have slowed down a little bit. And I think... Uh, few rallies. He's realised that the only way to get out of that short play from Peter Marshall is to, to put the ball up in the air. But again, game ball now for Dittmar. I think that's the fascinating thing about a good game is this tactical battle. Yes, and Peter not asking for a let there. There's no way he would have reached yes. that. So let's take a, a look back in that second game. I think the, the point where Peter started to maybe turn the tables a little bit. It was another very long rally, but uh, it was one where Peter managed to get Dittmar away from the tee. As we talked about earlier on, he started to, to play the ball more short and then pull Dittmar into the back of the court. And uh, if you just watch Dittmar's movement in this rally, I think you'll see that he's having to take more steps away from the middle. And even use the back wall. That's when you really know that a player's in trouble when he's got to put the ball up onto the back wall to, to reach the front again. But it's still a, a very long process to get a point. And there's the boast again. And Dittmar stopped at the end, and uh, there was that contro controversial decision about the Sixth about the stroke. stroke of the game, that one. Yes. <laughs> Long rally. Love all. I don't think uh, 90 Shh. seconds was uh, long enough for Peter there. Still seems to be uh, recovering. Yes, well, he strikes me after that last uh, game as a player who likes to have a scrap when, uh, when they're going tough. Seems to be able to concentrate and uh, get in there and fight, which is what, of course, he's going to have to do now at two down. Dittmar putting the pressure on right from the beginning and of this game. The left, one well, left. Forcing the first mistake. Peter's certainly going to have to keep up with those tactics that he started using in the, in the second game. Obviously, without making the error like he did there. Peter love one. So, clear hitting problem there. Peter unable to hit the ball. As Dittmar's shot came straight back to himself. And one all. The ball doesn't go any slower, does it? No. <laughs> Both are determined to keep the pace up. This really is something that I think a lot of people watching uh, who don't uh, play the game might find hard to, to realise. The, the pace the game is played at and, uh, and the endurance that the players have to have to keep this pace up over three or even maybe five games. Yeah, the thing is because the the racket work looks so so smooth and so easy you don't really see the physical exertion that uh, that's going on. But here I mean lunging into the front then off to the back of the court. It's non-stop isn't it? Yes. Dit 
under pressure there. Still got it back. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lovely drop. Yeah, so I think they're seeing Ditmar's having to, to start to, to have to boast the ball to get it back and uh, Peter taking full advantage before Ditmar was really choosing when to boast. And that's a, a sign that Peter's length is improving. And Ditmar got to move all the way back there. And look at that, they were both at the front of the court a few minutes ago. To the back to the front again. Very tight. <laughs> Unbelievable. The pickups that both players are bringing here. There's that one handed oh. shove down the wall here. Now was that the tired shot? A lot of hard work in that way, really. both, both players having to move Three, one. the full length of the court. Well this is where discipline takes over now. After a rally like that, you just mustn't play the, the easy winner. Oh, oh. Like that. <laughs> I don't think that one was easy. Four, one. Amazingly accurate. That's about the fourth time in this match we've seen that drop shot. Computer. Same position. Peter's two, two games down, I get the feeling that Ditmar's having to grit his teeth here. Well, it's always a nice situation though to have two games in hand, but always dangerous to, to relax. That ball. I think Ditmar looking for the stroke left. there. 4-1. Again, the referee having to decide whether he was ready for a winning stroke or not. And uh, if he decides he's not, then... Uh, he must call the let ball rather than the stroke. Again, Peter electing to play the ball rather than call the let. Let ball. 4-1. Dittmar not able to obviously there because uh, stroke was totally impeded. And backswing, though. Yes. Straight to Chris. And add one four. So Peter unable to get out of the way of his own drop shot in time and. Ditmar calling the, the wet ball and being given the straight because Peter wasn't out of the way. He came away from the front wall. Well, Peter hit the nick twice there. And just had to pick both of them up. But certainly that ball from Peter Marshall going much more regularly into the front of the court. Boasting him a lot at the moment. Pressure there too, lifting the ball up to gain time. This 
is hard work, isn't it? And they just keep it going. From one nick to the other, from one corner to the other, until it just can't Lines be played. Back, yes. A lot of strength that rally, you can see it on both players now. Three, yeah, four. Peter seems to always be Three, four. bending over after these long rallies as if he's uh, really is totally finished. Makes you wonder why, because he, uh, he can't probably breathe like that and any coach will tell you to stand up straight when you're trying to get your breath. But he gets up afterwards, doesn't he, and he keeps running. Yes. Great cross court from Chris Dittmar. And five four. I think Peter is feeling it here. If he wins this game, he's still got to win and two more. <laughs> I wonder if that thought's going through his mind Six now. Four. Well, 6 4 down, he's certainly got a lot of work to do to, to take this game. Again, that drop shot. So accurate. And then. Four, six. Turn Dittmar. Cross court, huh? Ah, Dittmar's back up there. Dittmar was running from one corner to the other there. I wonder whether he actually deliberately hit that Five, ball of six. his onto the side wall to try and get it to fly back at Peter's body. Now Dittmar's six turn all. to play the, the cheap shot. Six. Got to admire the fighting qualities of, of Peter's play here. He must be tired, but he's getting in there. He's determined to have a go at winning this, this game. Both players slipping there. It's still up. <laughs> Twice off the back wall from Dittmar. Makes you wonder why Peter went through to play that one. Well, it's not the first time either. I know. Six, seven. No. He knows it. Seven all. That's a shame, really. Peter was fighting back so well there. That's shots like that that cost matches. Again, the clear movement there into the front Olive. of the court. Seven all. And this is, I think, the stage of the match where it's it's really all down to routine. Seven 
the guy who's been in this kind of situation more often tends to play the right shot at the right time. Somehow the game seems to have got tight again. Both players once again having to move away from the tee the whole time. Let ball. Yes, Dittman said it. he's looking for a stroke time. off there and it's, it, it's, it's a let. Well, I think his comment was right, it was a stroke before, but the question was, was the stroke Seven before all. the right decision? Yes. That's the professional in Dittmar there, that, that situation, looking for a stroke. He needs a couple of points still. started to play this straight drop shot off Peter's boast before Seven he was all. just putting them back again but now he started to play the ball short uh, paid the price there the power oh. moving onto that ball perfect Seven shot all. into the back corner to win back the serve Looks like Dittmar's changed the pace now. He's looking to finish this game. That's it, just the change of pace created the opening. That's created first match ball, match ball for Chris Dittmar. Oh, cheeky shot. Oh, at full stretch, Peter Marshall is having to hang in now. Again at full stretch. He's not going to give this up, Peter Marshall. He won't make that. Yeah, Chris Dittmar, the winner of the Grasshopper Cup 1992. Nine Nine seven. 9-2, 9-3, 9-7, very tight at the end, but a deserved victory from Chris Dittmar. And it's goodbye from myself, Chris Haddon, and Andrew Marshall in Zurich in the Grasshopper Cup 1992.